export a G code file with slicer software. So 3D printers require a G code. So the G code tells the 3D printer where and how to move. And these G code files are very commonly used with CNC or computer numerical control machine equipment in machine shops. And so Slicer is going to accept an STL file and it's going to create a bunch of slices or thin layers. And the first thing, step one, is we want to verify that our default config file is loaded. You can see here in the upper right uh, that it is loaded. I have the config file.ini. So if you don't, you want to go up the file and load your config file. So sometimes when you open and close, you think that, oh, this is there because it was there last time. It doesn't remember it. You have to load it each time you're in Slicer. So you should make sure it's here. Now we're going to load a model, an STL file, in the Slicer. We're going to go up the file. We're going to go to Open in STL. I'm going to select on my file and say Open. It's going to load in the file. I'm going to scroll my scroll and zoom on just a bit. You can see here I have a coffee cup uh, mug holder that can mount on a, on a table or a desk or something like that. Uh, next, we want to verify some of our critical um, settings. I want to go up to settings and I want to go to print settings. And when I go to print settings, we're going to check a few critical settings. We're just going to make sure they're set correctly. They should be set correctly based on installing the default config file, but we're going to double check anyway. First one is I'm going to go to layers and perimeters. I'm going to check the layer height. The layer height at 0.3 is very low resolution. So we typically would um, if we made it thinner, or a 0.2 for example, it would have a smoother surface because it have thinner layers, but because we have thinner layers, it's going to take more time to create our 3D object. So you might want to go anywhere from a value of 0.1 to 0.3. Um, so 0.3 would be a basically a low resolution. Uh, next, we're going to come down here into our vertical shells. We're going to take a look at our shell thickness. And we want the perimeters to be 2. And what this is is defining the thickness of our side walls. So if we kick this value up, it will improve the strength of our 3D print. You'll notice down on the top and bottom we have it. A little bit thicker on top and a little bit thicker on the bottom on the horizontal shells. Next, let's come over to the infill. And in the infill, we want to make sure this is set to 15%. Okay, so I'm going to change mine to 15%. So my default config file uh, should have been 15%, but you can see it wasn't correct. So that's why we check these things. And so a uh, 15% infill uh, means is the percentage of how much is being filled in. So 100% would be a solid infill. Uh, so typically we run between about 5 and 20% for most basic, you know, just uh, things that don't need a whole lot of strength. So next, let's come down to our speed. In our speed, we want to check the speed of our perimeters. So we're moving uh, the extruder at 35 millimeters per second. All right. And the infill can go a little faster because no one's going to see it. The slower we go, the more qual higher quality our 3D object will be. The higher we go, the poorer the quality will be. But when it's on the inside or in the infill, no one's ever going to see it. Uh, so it's going to be on the inside of it. So when we slow things down, 
it means that it's a slower build time. Speed it up will be a faster build time, but faster means low quality. Quality slower means higher quality. So we just want to verify those. Now we want to go to step four, which is set up a G code file with changes for a beginner user. The first thing we want to do is go up to our skirt and brim. Now our skirt is our first pass um, around uh, the object. And the purpose of the skirt is to push out any uh, old pla PLA plastic and to get the air bubbles out. It also allows us to adjust, micro adjust, the Z height. So the first thing I would like to do for a beginner user is to make the distance from the object bigger. That gives us more time because it's going to be a bigger circle. And because it's a bigger circle, it has to travel longer and it's going to be have a little more time for us to make those micro adjustments of our Z height. So that helps us a little bit. So uh, and so that is 20 millimeters from the object uh, is the size of our skirt. Uh, next, we're going to go to our speed. And I go down the speed, and I'm going to come down here to first layer speed. So our first layer is our critical layer. We want to have a good adhesion to the bed plate. And so in this, typically the slower you go, the better adhesion we get. But also, it does allow us to have a little bit more time if we didn't finish micro adjusting the Z height in the skirt, we can get a little bit more time to do it in the first layer. So we're going to go to the 20%. Okay, I'm going to say percent. No, caution, it's not 20 millimeters per second. It's 20% of whatever our perimeter values are. So it will do the math for you. Okay, so this whole reason why we're doing this is to get better adhesion and to allow a beginner user to have a little more time to micro adjust the Z height and allow us to have a proper bead shape and that proper bead shape then will mean we'll have a good first layer and our first layer is critical because if we don't get a good first layer everything else from the build is ruined. Now we want to go and export. So we're going to go up to step five. We're going to export. And I'm going to click on the platter and I'm going to go and say export G code. And I'm going to pick on export G code. And now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to give this a name. Now I like to give it a name of eight characters or shorter because the Flex Mendel controller display generally only sees about eight characters. So I'm going to call this something like cup hold. Okay. And just give it a simple name, short, easy name, and then hit save. Okay. And It'll think a little while, it'll take a little time, and then it says the G file, G code file was exported to my folder. All right, so I've just created that uh, file. If I go into my folder, you can kind of see um, that uh, exported G file in here. I'll do that again just to make sure I knew where I put it. I'll go to export uh, file and I put it in the wrong folder. So I need to go back and put it in the folder where I wanted it to go. Uh, so I am going to go, for me, I wanted to go, well, I'll just go back here and look in this folder. How's that? So if I come in here, I'm going to go to my...
All right. Oh my me scrolling around here, but I'm going to go in here and go to STL files. And there is the file I just made right there. The cup, the cup hold file is so that's where I put it. And, and so now I end up with a G code file that I can go to the next step, which is copy it onto an SD card. And then I can 3d print this cup holder.